Hello everyone, Captain Horn here. Welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 video. I hope you enjoy watching and maybe even learn a thing or two from this video. Before we begin, if you would like to see more Microsoft Flight Simulator content, please consider subscribing to my channel. It takes less than 5 seconds and it would greatly help my channel out. If you are interested in supporting myself and my channel, be sure to check out the different tiers in my Patreon for different rewards. If you are interested in becoming an active member in my community, or would like to find others to fly with in Microsoft Flight Simulator, feel free to join my Discord server. The link to both my Patreon and Discord is in the description. Let's get right into this video. So today we are going to learn how to perform an instrument approach, or rather an ILS approach, with the Cessna Citation Jet. First, before we get into how to set one up and perform an ILS, what is an ILS? Well, that stands for Instrument Landing System, and this allows the aircraft to essentially land itself down to about 200 feet above the ground. Some aircraft even have what's called an auto land feature where they will land themselves all the way to the ground. Now, there's two main parts of an ILS and one of those is a localizer. Now a localizer is simply a radio signal that shoots straight out from the runway and allows the aircraft to capture this localizer and line itself up horizontally with the runway. The other aspect of an ILS is the glide slope and this is the slope at which the aircraft will descend in order to make contact with the pavement. Now ILS's are very fun to perform and they are very useful especially on a day like today where the clouds are very low and it would be difficult to perform a visual approach. So let's get into how to set up an ILS approach and let's perform one. Alright, we're now in the cockpit of this Cessna Citation Jet and setting up an ILS is actually pretty simple. All we need to do is head down to our FMC which is right down here and I like to click away the yoke just so we can actually see it. Alright, and what you need is an ILS approach programmed into the FMC. Now. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to be taking off from Charlotte and relanding at Charlotte, but it's the same concept if you were flying from point A to point B. Now, all we need to do is go to this flight plan button right here beside legs, and then I'm just going to fill in my origin, so KCLT, and like I said, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to land at KCLT. This is also good practice to take off from an airport and just do a pattern and see if you can perform an ILS. All right, after you got the origin and destination put in like that, what we need to do is head over to our departure and arrival, which is two buttons over right here beside the legs as well. And it's going to look something like this. Now, you want to set up your arrival, which is the ARR right here pointing to the airport, and click the button beside it, just like that. And then we have a bunch of approaches here. Now, these are just different runways, and you can view more runways by hitting this next button right here. And these are RNAV, which is a different type of approach. It's similar to an ILS, but it's not the same. And that is a different video. So you do not want an RNAV approach if you want to do an ILS. Obviously, if you want to do an ILS, you need to select ILS and a given runway. Now, I'm going to be selecting ILS 36 left. And it's automatically going to fill in a transition. You can have a star if you wish. You most likely will have a star for um, going from like point A to point B but if you are just doing some pattern work at an airport and practicing ILS you don't need a star and then after that you just go to route and click activate and it's going to turn these lines purple just like that now this is the path that our plane is going to follow and if I scroll or zoom out rather this is my path right here so we're going to take off take a turn to the right follow this all the way turn around and then come to this waylit point right here and fly straight in using the localizer and glide slope. Alright, another thing that is important before we get into the air is you need to make sure this says FMS1 when if you are practicing. This means it is going to follow your legs in your FMS or rather your approach via the FMS. And once we are really close to the localizer and glide slope we need to click this little nav button that has up and down on it right there and what that's going to do is it's going to switch FMS 1 over to VOR 1 and VOR 2 now they one of these is not going to say VOR once we are in the air one of them is going to say LOC 1 or lock 1 which is what it needs to be on in order to capture the glide slope alright and last if you are practicing pattern work I'm going to fly up to 7000 feet 
and so I'm just going to set my altitude here and after you have made sure you have your approach set up or rather your arrival in the FMC um, you can actually check and make sure the radio frequency is correct now if you go to this tune this TUN button down here it's going to show you what your nav 1 frequency is and mine is 110.15 a great resource to use and to double check your ILS frequency is a website called skyvector.com it's a totally free website and it shows you virtually every single airport in the entire United States and real world pilots even use it so all you want to do is to find your airport you can either know where it's at or you can type in the ICAO code right here in the top left so for me KCLT and it'll bring you right to that airport and then what you want to do is hold your mouse over the airport and right click and then hold your mouse over this bluish text right here and we see a bunch of approach procedures now I am landing on ILS runway 36 left so find your runway and then you click on it and it brings you up the entire approach plate now this looks a little complicated but we only need a few things from here first is the localizer frequency which is right here 110.15 and if we go back into the simulator we see my nav one is 110.15 another thing to know is I set my altitude up to 7,000 feet because at the waylet intersection we need to be at or above 7,000 feet and then it descends to 6,000 at or above 5,000, 4,000, 3,000 and 2,500 so SkyVector is a very useful resource. All right, after you've double checked your ILS frequency, set up your approach and make sure your route looks good, we can go ahead and take off. And I need to set my altitude back up to 7,000 feet. Why does it go by tens like that? There we go. All right, we can now take off. This jet is very fast and I really like how quick it is and the engine sounds of this jet you can see we are already at 100 knots and there's v1 and rotate all right and remember guys right off the runway we are going to make an immediate bank to the right like this in order to start getting on course all right another important thing to note guys is um you should turn this flight director on right here it's this FD above the course and all that is is a purple uh, thing <laughs> I guess you could say right here it looks like an arrow that shows you where your plane needs to go and it is very useful alright since we are above 2000 feet I'm going to go ahead and raise my flaps up one I'm going to engage autopilot and vertical speed to start getting us up to that 7000 feet that I want. Alright, and I'm also going to engage nav right here, which is going to get us to follow this purple line right here and to come all the way around to meet that waylet intersection. And we are already passing through a layer of clouds this low. Alright, we are approaching the waylet intersection, which is the start of our localizer. Now, another thing to keep in mind is right here on your false horizon we have these four dots right here now this is your glide slope and a diamond that will appear and on the bottom is your localizer and this diamond is showing that we are too far to the right and that's why it's way over here and this diamond is going to start moving over this way and we want it to be right in the middle and now that we are pretty much really close to the Wayla intersection and the localizer we can click this nav and it's going to switch to LOC1 from FMS just like that and the plane is going to start banking to make contact with this localizer and as you guys can tell this is a very good day for a localizer or an ILS approach rather it is very very cloudy outside can't even see the ground so th there's no way you could do a visual approach or it'd be very difficult rather next what we need to do is actually engage our APPR button right there once this diamond starts moving over we see the plane is currently trying to find this localizer and it's banking back towards this Wayla intersection and our glide slope diamond has just come up and we are actually too high so I'm going to lower my altitude down to about 5,000 feet just like that and I'm going to use VNAV and this is going to 
automatically descend us. All right, and there goes our localizer diamond. It is now moving over, and we see the plane is banking, trying to keep up with it. And our glide slope diamond is moving up, which is a good thing because we also want the glide slope diamond to be right on this white line. All right, at this point, we can go ahead and drop the gear and lower our flaps down one notch to slow us down. And we do now want this APPR mode, which is approach mode, and that's going to engage both the localizer and glide slope. And you'll know if it's working if it says LOC up here and GS, which stands for glide slope. The plane is now descending itself to make contact with the runway. That's the whole point of the glide slope because obviously if we just sat at 7,000 feet, we'd fly right over the airport. And we now see the localizer diamond is pretty much right in the very middle, which means we are now lined up with the runway, even though it doesn't look like it because we can't see the ground. And our glide slope diamond is slowly moving up which means we are exactly where we need to be. At this point, all your lights can come on, and like I said, you should drop your gear once you're established on the localizer, and we're gonna drop our flaps one more time when we are closer to the runway. And our glide slope diamond is making its way up to the middle. Alright guys, we have now punched through the cloud layer as you see and we can see the ground and we don't even really have to look up because I know that we are in line with the runway because this diamond is right in the middle and we are on the perfect glide slope because this diamond is pretty much in the middle. But we can look up and see the runway right there. And we have white over red which means we are perfect. Now one thing is that this plane does not have the auto land feature I was talking about earlier and you will need to disconnect the autopilot when you are pretty close to the runway. If you don't disconnect the autopilot, then it will just crash into the ground or it'll be a very bouncy uh, landing. And once you disengage the autopilot, you of course need to flare. You really don't even have to touch it because your localizer has taken care of that, but you do need to flare. And another thing to note is this aircraft does not have uh, armed spoilers, so you have to deploy the speed brakes or spoilers yourself and it also has no auto brake but this jet does have a reverse engine functionality there's our 500 call out and I like to disengage the autopilot whenever we are a little bit closer than this. Like somewhere right around here is a good spot to disengage the autopilot and you just press that bar that's under the AP. And then you really don't have to touch it but you just lower your throttle down and flare it a little bit. And there's very smooth contact. Of course, you got to deploy your spoilers yourself and reverse the engines. Don't even have to apply brakes on this aircraft. The reverse engines and spoilers take care of a lot of it. See, we are already down to 40 knots. And you can take away your reverse engines, lift up your spoilers, and lift up your flaps, and you can get your landing light off and taxi off of the runway. So, guys, that is an ILS landing. Just to recap, you want to make sure that you have your approach set up in your FMS or FMC. And then you want to check your altitude restrictions at each waypoint. Make sure when you are approaching the localizer to switch this nav mode over to lock 1 right here instead of FMS. If it is on FMS, then like this, then it's not going to follow the localizer in. And then once you're on the localizer, drop your gear, drop your flaps, and engage your APPR button, which is going to engage the glide slope. If your glide slope does not capture, that means you're either way too high or way too low, and you need to try and get this diamond right here in the middle. If, it, if the diamond's way up here, that means you're way too low, and if it's all the way at the bottom, you are way too high. 
but it just takes some practice go to an airport like I have just done set up an arrival into that same airport fly the route and just practice doing these ILS approaches so that's going to do it for today's video guys if you're new to the channel please do like and subscribe don't forget my patreon and discord links are in the description always looking for some new members to my discord be on the lookout for a more live streams and more Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 tutorials. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the day or night, depending on when you are watching this. And I will see you guys in the next video.